Okay, we're going to talk about some generators now, and forgive me, I've only got one hand to operate the uh, camera with the video record, so if it gets a bit shaky at different times, let me know. Uh, what we're going to look at first is the general operation of a, um, a wet generator, which is this uh, old blue uh, Ansto generator that's been superseded uh, by the Gentech uh, generator, which is um, uh, a dry generator, and I'll explain the difference between the two of those as we go. So these are cold generators, so there's no radioactivity in them, um, but we'll just talk about some of the, the components. So what I've done is I've actually popped the, the top of these anyway, so you can actually see that the generator has expired many years ago. So if we, uh, if we remove the top of that, what it exposes is this aluminium shield um, that uh, houses the, the entire product. This thing is uh, about 22 kilograms, so obviously the, despite the plastic on the outside, is it has a, a bit of lead on the inside. Now normally you would actually have uh, these uh, screws or bolts that are, are popped in there. Um, there's obviously four locations that actually hold that casing down. So that casing's held in place and you can see again that, that uh, on the inside that there's a, a duplicate version of the, um, the um, identification criteria and expiry dates, etc. that match the outside. So if we lift that uh, aluminium case off, what it does is it exposes the inside and you can actually see that we have this strong plastic casing um, obviously they go through a, a number of drop tests and, uh, and inside it you have a, a large lead housing and you can see that off uh, either side and uh, normally you, before you would do any of this you would have gloves on so um, obviously it's, being, it's cold and, and not a concern but on either side you actually have this uh, inlet, outlet and we'll talk about what those mean in a second but nice thick lead. Um, I'll just see if I can wedge that off with one hand. No. Uh, so what I'll do is uh, I'll just <laughs> I'll put you down for two seconds. You can look at something else. And uh, and then what we've done is I've, I've wedged that out. And, and so what you end up with is this uh, lead cap. And so this lead cap is obviously shaped to fit into these grooves to prevent any uh, kind of uh, leakage. So it just slots into that, uh, that groove, um, seals all the, the uh, potential leakage of, uh, of radiation in terms of not liquid leakage, but obviously uh, photon emissions uh, and particulate emission. Now obviously if there's anything particulate in there, uh, it would create Bremsstrahl and radiation, but that would be absorbed by the thickness of the lead. So then what we have is that on this side, the um, uh, uh, inflow side, you have a saline bag. This one contains 250 mils, and so it's going to flow in uh, one side of this lead housing and come out the other. And in the middle of it, we have the aluminium column. Okay, so, so this is the actual column, and it's got a bit of silica and glass... Um, uh, filters and, and uh, wool filters, as well as aluminium with the molybdenum bound to it on the column. So it's actually fairly small, and the molybdenum is contained in there. So if we have uh, saline washing in from the top, uh, down across the column, uh, washes across, um, the molybdenum is more tightly bound to the aluminium than the technetium, so the uh, molybdenum that's decayed to technetium will get washed off, and that will be technetium 99 as well as technetium 99M and progress down uh, the line. So down the line, so that's all just uh, conveniently tucked into there. Um, you'll also see inside the housing these absorbent materials. This will expand to a fairly good thickness of maybe an inch, inch and a half. Um, and so that little bit of absorbent material that's uh, packed in around the housing uh, is capable of absorbing um, 250 mils plus. Um, now, if the bag runs out, this is one of the issues with the, uh, the wet system. Well, it's not a big issue in clinical practice, but if you alluded over 250 mils, then obviously you'd have to break this thing open uh, and, and top it up. So you could actually top it up through the port. Um, but in most clinical environments, 250 mils is not going to be alluded in a week. It might become an issue if you're uh, using a generator over two week periods, so having double elutions, uh, a new generator in week one combined with a new and an old one in week two. Um, or more commonly in centralised pharmacies where some of these um, products might be um, uh, cycled on two or three elutions per day um, to generate the maximum um, uh, efficiency in terms of output. 
So the, um, the outside uh, of this comes into this mechanism that I'm just about to pull out. But before I pull it out, it's obviously the housing where um, we have our needle and we'll have an elution pot. Now I don't have an elution pot for this because it's such an old system. These have been out of date for quite a few years. But you would have a, a lead pot with an evacuated vial that would sit in here uh, and in essence, um, obviously you would remove the needle and I won't use the lead pot because um, obviously uh, you won't be able to see what's going on. But there's a little tab here. We lift this tab and as we lift the tab, you can see that the needle drops down, uh, punches the, in theory, punches the, um, the uh, um, vial. It's an evacuated vial of say 20 mils. And so it will draw 20 mils of saline out of the bag across the aluminium column and into that um, into that vial. So so that's the actual mechanism, um, and it's actually pretty simple. But what it does, and this is why it's defined as a, a dry a wet generator, what it actually does is it actually leaves the um, column soaking in saline. So saline is drawn, 20 mils of saline is drawn from the bag down the line across the column and out into the vial on the other side but in doing that is that the entire system is bathed in saline it's just full of saline and so this column here is soaking in saline and while generally they're pretty stable is that what it can actually do is um, create some degree of um, instability so you might get a little bit more molybdenum breakthrough or aluminium breakthrough so the mechanism itself it just lifts out so it's a nice little uh, slot there it's very modular lifts out so on the back you can actually see that you've got a spring loaded mechanism that as uh, that lift lever is lifted it actually releases the spring and allows the flow of uh, saline through um, the, uh, the network. Um, when it's down then obviously it blocks that off, clamps it off and you don't get that flow. So that's the, uh, the wet generator um, that we use. Uh, we used to use uh, a few years ago. The principle is very similar and, uh, and essentially um, uh, it's a fairly simple system. When these are, are loaded, obviously you'd want to load those as quickly as possible to reduce staff radiation. And so from time to time we used to find that there'd be a kink in the, in the system, either as it gets poked in or as the lead cap gets put on, um, that uh, you can end up with a kink in the line um, that uh, stops it from being eluted. But generally they're tested a few times before they come out to, uh, to the department. And, um, and so we generally don't have too many problems with that. So that is the wet generator that has been superseded uh, by our friend over here, the dry generator.